Before we move on to the video, if you are looking for more lease study material, please do not hesitate to contact me on my email and on my LinkedIn. In addition to the material, I have also developed a file in which I have put all the credit categories with their respective names, adaptations to which they apply, their description, their details, furthermore required documentations, formulas, and the standards they follow in a tabular form and color coded. And all the important terminologies related to that credit categories are stated below. Feel free to contact me and I'll be more than happy to share all with you. Materials and Resources 13 point for all adaptations for Core and Shell 14 and for Healthcare 19. Now why lead focuses on materials and resources. Building and construction activities worldwide consume 3 billion tons of raw materials each year, accounting for 40% of total global raw material use. The use of green building materials decreases the use of non-renewable resources and reduces the carbon emissions that result from extracting, harvesting, manufacturing, and disposing of building products. All these harvesting manufacturing are sustainable features we saw in the pre-lead video. These are the uh, prerequisites and credits related to materials and resources. If you see, there are so many credits and there is one prerequisite exclusively for healthcare. So there are total five of them, four credits and one prerequisite. So I have decided and divided my video into two parts. One will be for the rest of all adaptations and one, the part two will be for healthcare only starting from source reduction mercury and the rest of the credits following. So let's begin. Prerequisite number one, storages and collection of recyclables. The intent is to reduce waste disposed of to the landfills and providing the storage and collectible areas for the materials that can be recycled. If you remember that methane is associated with the landfills that if the, the waste ends up in the landfill, it will produce methane, which is a greenhouse gas. And in terms of global warming potential, it is much more dangerous than carbon. So you have to reduce that impact by uh, minimizing the waste that ends up in the landfill. And this is done by uh, smart collection and then recycling them or reusing them. So for the requirement, you have to provide dedicated areas for recyclable collection that is equally accessible to the tenants and waste haulers and five materials must be included uh, for the recycling. That is paper, cardboard, glass, plastics and metals. And remember, this is a prerequisite. So you have to do it in order to get uh, certified, elite certified because this is mandatory and we cannot skip it. For the retail project, based on the nature of the project, lead gives them a flexibility that they can make or they can uh, have a study of their own for minimum 24 hour period and they can identify for their project the top five recyclable waste streams. And if they have done this practice earlier, the same information can be used and these identifiable uh, five recyclable waste streams would be used. For the documentation uh, for the PR1 storages and collection of recyclables, verification of recycled material types, and a narrative describes the storage and collection strategies. In addition to that, you have to show where you are putting this uh, storage device or storage bin so that it is equally accessible to the tenants and for the waste haulers. And for the retail projects, they should submit their study as well. Prerequisite number two, construction and demolition waste management plan. If you see the intent, it's exactly similar to what we have seen in the prerequisite number one. But the prerequisite number one was dealing with the waste generated by the building occupants and this is uh, dealing with the waste generated by the whole project or the construction or demolition process. If you see below in the figure, it shows the waste management solutions and uh, starting from more efficient, uh, the source reduction to the least efficient waste to energy. Uh, I'll give you an example of source reduction. If, for example, you have a site in which you have to make a wall and you have uh, lots of bricks and cement and all this stuff. So now when you make a wall, you'll break the block as well and you'll mix the cement and all that stuff. But if you have a prefab wall coming exactly of the same size and you have to install that wall, for example, by the glue or by studs or something uh, similar. In that case, you can imagine that the number of uh, waste materials or particles or 
all these things would be reduced significantly. So this is the idea, a rough idea to give for source reduction. If you can reduce the source of waste production, then you can uh, be uh, most efficient when it comes to the waste management solution practices. Uh, just a reminder, this should not be confused, this uh, prerequisite should not be confused with uh, erosion and sedimentation control plan. This was, uh, that plan was dealing with the pollution or uh, the air contaminants or the water contaminants uh, if uh, generated or produced by uh, the construction activities where this prerequisite deals with the waste or the materials produced by uh, the construction and demolition uh, activities. So the requirement is to develop and implement the plan by establishing waste diversion goals. Just like we were diversing uh, uh, the waste in uh, storages and uh, collection of recyclables in the previous prerequisite, this is on a broader scale and coming on to the construction activity. At least five materials, structural plus non-structural. Structural could be concrete, uh, block, uh, cement or um, uh, steel like that non-structural would be any piping any cable tray and uh, related stuff this is which is not uh, related to structure directly percentage of impact of waste with these five materials Wh whatever you select these five materials uh, you have to show the percentage of impact and if you are gathering these materials in one place or in a separate containers uh, it could be that you have one uh, big waste collection box or uh, uh, s something similar and you put everything inside and this has to be sorted out later in some facility. Or you can have different um, waste boxes for different uh, materials. And uh, showing that where materials will be taken and how they will be recycled. So you have to make sure that you are not only collecting them but you are making sure that you are giving them to a facility that is recycling them in a proper way. However, there are some exemptions. The hazardous waste should not be included in the conversion calculation. If you, you can see the formula down and this is the waste box that are waste haulers we are talking about when it comes to the bigger scale or on the construction side. I'm sure you have seen many of them. So the uh, diversion rate is uh, total waste uh, uh, diverted from the landfill by total waste produced by the project times 100 which will give you the percentage. Now excavated soil is also not counted in any calculation. Whenever you extract a soil from uh, from the site, uh, so if it comes as soil, if it comes as land debris, if it comes as rocks and whatever comes uh, when you excavate, uh, this will not be considered as, as waste. And uh, alternative daily cover, which we have seen in sustainable size towards, it counts towards total waste, but you cannot con uh, count it as a recycled material. Uh, for the documentation, uh, CWM plan, which is construction waste management plan and final construction waste report. Because it is showing total waste produced by, uh, produced by the project, so you have to submit a final construction waste report. And whatever waste was generated, where it was diverted, and uh, their rates, because you have to show the percentage of impact, so it has to be submitted and provided by the end of the project. Credit number one, construction and demolition waste management. This is a respective credit to the prerequisite we have just seen, hence there is no difference in the intent. Now how to achieve? The first option is waste diversion and uh, it can gain two points, one to two points. You can divert 50% and three material streams, which could be anything structural and non-structural that we have seen in the prerequisite. Could be carpet, paper, metal, brick, concrete, brick and concrete, and asphalt are structural. The others are non-structural. And uh, or either you can go for two points, which uh, in which you have to show that 75% has been diverted, and there are four material streams. It may go that all this what you have collected, it can go to the recycling facility, they sort it out and they recycle it. Or you can send it to the used markets. If you have uh, collected any plastic, any paper, any metal, for example, it can go to used market and it can be even reused on the site itself. Uh, if you have uh, collected any uh, material that you can reuse on site, so this will also count towards the waste diversion that you have collected some waste 
and you have used it elsewhere even if it is on your own site. Uh, the documentation uh, could be the, uh, the data from construction waste management calculator or any tool uh, uh, tracking total and diverted waste and the diversion method. This is important. And if you are gathering all the waste in one uh, waste bin or waste box, then you have to submit a documentation of recycling waste from the waste facility that you are submitting this commingled waste to this recycling facility, this re recycling facility. Uh, separates all this waste and they will generate a report that you have su to submit uh, to GBCI. This is the option number one. You can select another option with, a, um, uh, with different uh, requirements. Let's see what those requirements are. So for option number two, it's a reduction of total waste produced by the project for two points. It's uh, a broader, uh, you can say, uh, idea, but it's a bit more uh, time taking in terms of calculation. You cannot generate or do not generate more than two and a half pounds of waste per feet square for of the grass floor area. This GFA comes again and again in all the credits until the end. And strategies may include modular construction which I discussed in uh, the prerequisite that if you have uh, a wall and you bring the, the, the modular structure inside will be uh, reducing the waste a lot. Uh, prefabrication also a uh, nice technique or effective when it comes to the reduction of the waste or standard industry sizes usage. You design your project in a way that you uh, you use the size that is acceptable or the size that you can purchase directly from the industry. The documentation is total floor area calculations because based on which you will submit that how many pounds of waste per feet square have you produced per total floor area. Exemplary performance can be earned of one point when option one and two both are achieved. So if you if you are able to submit documentation uh, of option one and option two, you'll be able to gain one extra bonus point. Credit number two, building life cycle impact reduction, two to five points in all adaptations. The intent is to encourage reuse and optimize environmental performance of products and materials. The difference, uh, a little difference between products and materials could be that materials are used to make products. This is important to understand before we move on because there are so many terminologies coming like cradle to cradle, cradle to gauge. So we can see what do they mean here in the life cycle of building products. Uh, the building products life cycle starts with the cradle, which is uh, the yellow arrow here. And it uh, mentions the resource extraction of materials to produce product. Then you go to the manufacturing facility. The products are being manufactured by the material. And from the cradle phase to uh, the gate phase is when the material is or the products are ready to be dispatched to the construction site or whatever or wherever they have to be used. So once they reach the construction site or the place where they need to be used, they are put together and the building uh, is occupied and maintained. And after it finishes its life cycle of certain number of years, whatever uh, it was designed for, it is ready for demolition. Now, in demolition, there is, uh, you can see it says reuse. The difference between reuse and recycle is that reuse you can uh, use as it is. It is not treated. For example, if you find a door during demolition and you use the same door in some other place, this would be considered as, as reuse and not recycle. So after demolition, all this waste generated could go to the landfill. Uh, this would be the grave uh, phase of uh, this life cycle or it can be recycled and put back into the cradle phase so if it is recycled it will be cradle to cradle scope if it ends up in the landfill it is cradle to grave scope and the scope from cradle to the factory gate would be cradle to gate scope so uh, this when we see now in the credit we know that uh, what does it mean by uh, cradle to cradle, cradle to grave, a great, a grave and cradle to gate. The requirement of this credit is to fulfill the intent of reducing environmental effect by following uh, one of the three options. The first option is historic building reuse by surface area for five points in all adaptation. Now, if you are using a historic um, building, it means that you are not actually constructing a building itself. You are just uh, improving it or uh, you are renovating it from inside because 
you cannot demolish any portion portion unless it is really necessary or it is a uh, danger to the structure and uh, you you have to maintain existing building structure envelope or interior non-structural elements of the historic building the idea is that you are reducing all the waste that would be produced in other case if you are going for a new building construction so you have saved all this uh, 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 waste and all the fossil fuel burned for uh, transportation of materials and construction of the new building uh, if you remember uh, in uh, sustainable side the, there was a topic of historic location and it has to be verified by a certain uh, agency or authority to uh, designate it as a historic state. The same goes here that you have to have an evidence for the documentation of historic designation status and a narrative describing demolition if it is required uh, and structure uh, is, is dangerous or uh, forever uh, for whatever other reason. But you have to specify if you are demolishing. Otherwise, you cannot demolish any area of any historic building so this is option number one for five points either you can go for this one or you can go for the second option I'll keep these photos below the first one is the historic buildings and the other two options we're gonna see it in our next slide option number two is renovation of abandoned building by surface area it, the intent requirement is almost uh, similar to historic buildings but in this case you do not have a historic designation status but you can see that this building is abandoned this is already built before uh, or be lighted and if you renovate this building or reuse this building all the environmental effects or the uh, the plus signs of uh, environmental effect that we could uh, achieve there in the historic buildings will also be achieved here so lead gives you an opportunity to renovate any abandoned building by the surface area and give you the same five number of points and here there is a small flexibility as well that you have to maintain at least 50 percent by surface area of existing building and the remaining uh, including structure enclosure interior structural elements and uh, if you are uh, using these projects as existing buildings definitely it would be for the renovation projects 25 percent in this uh, category if this is not uh, having a historic status 25 percent can be demolished you can for example you can take a building and you can change the facade of it uh, which will give a new look as well and you can uh, qualify for a renovation of abandoned building if more than 25 percent unfortunately you cannot pursue the credit uh, for the documentation a narrative describing abandoning or be lighting status and reuse elements table and calculation this is uh, the abandoned or be lighted uh, building reuse formula uh, surface area used by existing building surface area minus hazardous or unsafe should not be included and uh, these are the this, this was the second option either you could go for option one two or for the option three which we are going to see now option number three is building and material reuse by surface area two to four points and for core and shell it can give you five points uh, we have gone through the historic buildings where you cannot demolish anything there is uh, be lighted or abandoned buildings where you could demolish 25 percent now it gives you another idea it gives you another possibility that you can take materials off site or on site and reuse them in your project uh, it and it gives you a wide range actually uh, structural elements like floors roof decks can be reused enclosure materials like skin framing interior materials like uh, walls floors ceilings and you cannot use any hazardous hazardous has been taken off from e everywhere so uh, and also surprisingly you cannot use windows assemblies uh, these uh, and this is the percentage that you can uh, see on the in the table that if you are able to show 25% of project surface area is reused you can gain uh, two points and for 50 percent three and for 75 four but for core and shell you can get five points for that now these all three and this is the formula also that excludes hazardous materials below and uh, put all the factors to show the conformance percentage now all these three I, I said in the previous slide there are three options these three options are for renovation projects if you see that if you're using historic building 
uh, be lighted abandoned buildings and salvage building materials you are kind of renovating a project and in this first case you could not change anything in the second case you could change some in the third case uh, you're able to show that you're only using 25 percent and gaining points but these are all for renovation projects so what happens when you are going for a new construction you have planned a new construction can you gain any points yes we have an option for let's have a look at that so if you're going for a new project unfortunately this is the only option for you whole building life cycle assessment that is going to give you three points now you can conduct a life cycle assessment of project structure and closure showing minimum reduction of 10 percent from the baseline building in three of the six following categories now we know that when it comes to a baseline if you remember in water uh, budget we had to uh, calculate a baseline in energy and atmosphere we had to calculate a baseline it is usually done in a software we're going to see it in a little while now these are the six categories out of which we have global warming depletion of st uh, stratospheric ozone layer acidification of land water and others and these are the measurement units in case you are using any one of them three out of six but global warming potential is a must it should be included in your calculations or in the in the comparison and no category should be more than 5%. For this 10% reduction, no category can contribute more than 5%. Now let's have a look how we are going to do that. As we did earlier, we have to make a comparison in a software. Uh, and both baseline and design should be analyzed by same tools or same software so that there is no change in any of the calculations. So you have to uh, first make a baseline design or uh, baseline uh, values of all this global warming potential and other categories then you have to uh, put your design in the same software and see how much improvement you can make on these factors so uh, for the documentation you have to submit the description of life cycle assessment assumptions scope analysis process of baseline building it, in order to make a comparison all what you need or all what you have put in the software you have to show in the documentation and then what percentage you have uh, achieved on the baseline must be submitted uh, for option number three if you remember option number one was historic second was abandoned be lighted for option number three if you're able to show that you have reused 95 percent by surface area you're going to get another one point but this is for option number three only and if you have shown any improvement in in the new building design and uh, construction uh, over threshold in all categories you're able to achieve one bonus point so you have one bonus point in renovation project or you have an option to have a bonus point in new construction projects credit number three building product disclosure and optimization or bpdo environmental product declarations epd one to two points in all adaptations before we move on there are three uh, credits coming under BPDO there is environmental product declarations sourcing of raw materials and material ingredients so BPDO remains same the EPD will be changed to sourcing of raw materials and the material in ingredients we're gonna see it one by one now the intent of this particular credit is to reward project teams for selecting products with verified improved environmental life cycle impacts now, we have seen in uh, uh, our slide earlier what is environmental life cycle is shown here as well uh, a bit uh, not as explanatory as the, the previous one but it gives the same idea from cradle to gate and then to grave and then to create back to cradle so EPD environmental product declaration is a standardized way of communicating the environmental impact of the product in terms of its extraction of its raw material the energy used for the production the waste generation in in the process and emission to air and soil and all this uh, epds or declarations should be at least or minimum cradle to gate scope that how you have extracted your materials how you have processed them and how you have packaged them ready for delivery after that you know the usage and uh, the recycling part and all the going back to the landfill is basically not under the hand of the manufacturer so they are only confined to give you the scope from cradle to gate now let's see the the options for uh, this credit the uh, first option to fulfill the requirement is use at least 
20 different permanently installed building products. Now, uh, as per lead, the permanently installed building products are something related to uh, any any product that is related to the structure or connected to it, like concrete, asphalt, and uh, and walls. All these are are um, permanently installed products. It also includes doors, framings, and uh, for example, if you say the ca the cabinets installed in the kitchen, anything that is attached to the structure of the building is a permanently installed building product. So you can you have to select twenty different products from five different manufacturers that meet one of the criteria. Now, it gets a little bit boring because it comes uh, that it has to follow certain standard and we're not going to discuss here the standard only the uh, number and name of the standard. So the first one is that the product specific declaration as for uh, uh, per ISO 14044 having cradle to gate scope minimum. Now we know what is cradle to gate. and. Uh, these environmental uh, product declarations are like self-declaration by the product itself. It's not third-party verified and uh, the valuation factor is 0.25 or 25 percent. So if you have one product like that uh, for the lead calculation it will be only 25 percent or 0.25. So in order to make it one product you have to select four products uh, having valuation factor of 0.25 to count it as complete whole product. The industry-wide EPD conforming to the uh, ISO 14025, IFL, uh, I 14040, 14044 standards uh, are also having cradle to gate. The industry-wide standard could be understood as if certain standard is uh, generalized for a painting industry, for example, or a door manufacturing industry, and any product is uh, saying that it is uh, or declare that it is conforming to that industry-wide accepted standard. Uh, as shown in ISO. So this uh, will give you a valuation factor. This is called a sort of third party verified and it gives you a valuation factor of 50% or 0 0.5. So one product will be equal to half a product. If it is product specific type 3 environmental product declaration, it means that now if considering the same example of paint, now if they say that this standard is for glossy paint and you are buying that glossy paint and this uh, product is uh, following the uh, environmental uh, production, uh, environmental protection, or EPDs for uh, this standard that is product specific, then you can have the valuation factor of one. That this product, which is uh, following the standards product specific type three EPD, so uh, you will have one uh, valuation factor, or hundred percent of the product will be considered. And if there is any USCBC approved environmental product, so you can see the same types of EPDs uh, table below. That if it is product specific uh, declared by the company, valuation factor is 25, industry wide is half, and product specific type 3 environmental product declaration is 1. So when you calculate total number of products, is the number of products with specific declarations uh, by 25% plus specific declarations industry-wide by half and with type 3 EPDs by 1. So all this should comply with 20 uh, permanently installed products with 5 different manufacturers if you are able to show uh, by BPD or calculator equivalent tracking tool, LCA reports and everything then you will have the points to be gained in this category. Now you can go for the second option. Uh, the second option could be or you can either go for option one or you can go for both the option. The option number two is multi attribute optimization. It's going to give you one point as well. Now this is based on cost. It's not based on the number of products you use. It's uh, based on cost saying that ensure that 50% of permanently installed pro building products, which we know what they are, are third party certified projects that demonstrate reduction of the factors which we have seen this uh, six factors of global warming and others if they comply uh, or demonstrate reduction on these factors these uh, products will be uh, considered as a valuation factor of one now this is an interesting thing that lead has put into the valuation factor which is based on location if your product that you're using on your project is harvested and produced within 100 miles radius of the project the valuation factor will be 2. Since you are trying to uh, ensure 50% of the 
cost of uh, materials of the permanently building installed building products are uh, following uh, certain criteria. So if you can show that this, uh, uh, for instance, if you buy one product that is hundred dollars and it is harvested and uh, produced within the hundred miles uh, radius of the project, it will be considered as two hundred dollars and it will help you a lot in uh, conforming with the requirements of the credit. So if you see the formula below, the percentage of material cost will be product cost one times the criterion uh, valuation factor, which were this, uh, uh, the six factors from the uh, other credit we have seen, including global warming and torification, etc. And you can add this location valuation factor. It's very uh, helpful when it comes uh, to the point where you are buying the product. It is uh, giving two uh, incentives. First, the local industry will be helped out if you are buying products within 100 miles. And secondly, the transport cost of that material from your project will be first less. Secondly, it will be reducing less emissions. We have seen in the previous videos that sometimes the product which itself is green, but it is not considered sustainable because uh, the transportation uh, emissions for this project from one place to another release too many emissions in, in the atmosphere that is not green anymore. So the structural and in enclosure material, this is also one constraint, concrete window steel may not constitu constitute more than 30% because if you are going for a core and shell project, you might not even put some doors. So in that case, you can even show that by just uh, using the concrete and the asphalt material, you are able to conform with the credit. So they are not able to contribute more than 30%. For the documentation, building product disclosure, uh, disclosure optimization calculator or any equivalent tracking tool and the total cost of the product should be shown and this formula which you are looking now, it has to be uh, submitted uh, showing the percentage of materials cost. Just to put things into a better perspective, for uh, environmental product declaration option, you have two options. Option one is EPD where you have product specific declaration one by four industry-wide half, product-specific type 3 EPD is a full value and if there is any equivalent, USGBC approved program and you can go for and and or option number two. You can earn an exemplary performance if in first instead of 20, you can go for 40 products in option one or at least 75% by cost for option two, which was 50 previously. So you can earn a bonus exemplary uh, performance of one point. Credit number four, BPDO, Building Product Disclosure Optimization and Sourcing of Raw Materials, one to two points in all adaptations. So the intent is to reward project teams for selecting products verified to have been sourced and extracted in a responsible manner. This, this is dealing with the steps. The first one was um, uh, the declaration. The, first, the second one is that how you have sourced your materials and the third one will be what ingredients you are using in your products. So the option number one to fulfill the uh, intent is a raw material source and extraction reporting how you have uh, extracted the raw material and what were the sources. The concept is uh, similar to the option one in uh, the previous credit, at least 20 different products from five different manufacturers that publicly release report for their raw material suppliers. And they should not only uh, release the names, but it should also release the location, uh, responsibility, and commitment to reducing environmental harm. So environment is all the time uh, focus. We know that it is uh, one of the key things LEED has been focusing on. So self-declared reports in the previous one, the self-declared was uh, considered as uh, one by four, but here it is considered as half 0 0.5. And third part, uh, third party verified corporate sustainability reports, CSRs, including environment, environmental impact, will be considered as the valuation factor of one. And if you see the formula, total number of products by their valuation factor plus the second number of products. So it will give you uh, the total if um, by applying the valuation factor, if you are able to show that you have used 20 different products from five different manufacturers, you'll be able to get one point here. And documentation, BPDO calculator, equivalent tracking tool, Certified reports, if you are using for uh, the valuation factor of one, they should be submitting and all the products that you have used should be shown in the documentation. Again, or at end, there will be two possible uh, connections or uh, 
the relation between the two options. The second one is leadership extraction practices. I'm going to give you one point in all adaptations. Now, the similar uh, idea, the first one was based on number of products. The second one is based on percentage by cost. So 25% by cost. The first one is 50. Do not forget here. It is 25%. 25% by cost of total value of products that meet at least one of the following criteria. Uh, extended user responsibility, which says that close group recycling and take back programs. Uh, take back programs if you can use certain uh, material or product and they offer the the product manufacturer they offer that after certain times you can give them back this material or uh, the product and they will reuse it in in their facility so they offer take back programs uh, so this kind of uh, disclosure or uh, reporting if this is uh, done by the manufacturer then this product will be valued as half uh, or 50 percent if it is based on biomaterials products good made from substances derived from living organisms but leather and animal skin products should not be counted there so cotton fiber and if they uh, meet with the uh, sustainability agricultural standard this will be considered as valuation factor of one so there is a theme that first you are talking about the building uh, products that um, number of building products based on some valuation factor then you are coming back to the cost of uh, the products installed and there are some valuation factors so let's uh, proceed and see what comes next after extended user responsibility of valuation factor of half then bio-based material for one we have certified wood product wood products must be certified by fsc forest stewardship council or any equivalent by approved by uscbc forest stewardship council uh, looks into the into the wood that is harvested from the forest and even it looks into further detail how this forest were, were being watered so this uh, wood certifies as uh, uh, the sustainable wood and it, it is possible that in a certain product not all of the wood is uh, certified by forest stewardship uh, stewardship council so the the manufacturers they ex they explain this in their uh, product that how much by weight is uh, wood certified by FSC in the figure if you see the FSC 100% certified uh, is only 10% uh, by weight so in that case you can only put uh, uh, the, the cost of the wood that is the certified wood in this case for example if the product value is 100,000 you purchase doors or wood products that were uh, costing 100,000 for the project and only 10% of that was uh, certified by FSC, so your total cost will be uh, 100,000 times 10%, and it will be 10,000. And this is how you can calculate the cost of the product that is certified by FSC. So the next criteria, and the credit number four is materials reused, salvaged, used, or refurbished products, uh, and it should not contain any toxic hazardous materials. We know that we are always taking them out of any equations. And the valuation factor, if uh, they are user refurbished, would be one. But there is one thing that I put in red. It should be considered that if you remember in the credit number two, option number three, where we, uh, where we were using the building products from structural, non-structural, and reusing them uh, the in building material and reuse credit, uh, it can be counted in one case. If you have counted it there in uh, building uh, material and reuse, they cannot be counted here. If you recall, it was 50% for one point and 75% for an exemplary or uh, two points and uh, further for exemplary point. So either you can count it there or here. You, uh, you cannot double uh, the use of those materials in both the credits. Uh, the next criteria is recycle content. Uh, if you recall, reuse is different from recycle in the way that reuse is used as is, whereas recycle, you put it into the production again and it is recycled. So it must conform to ISO. 14021-1999 and product meeting the criteria of this standard will have valuation factor of 1. The pre-consumer recycled content is valuation factor of 0.5. Uh, pre-consumer is when, uh, if you, uh, let's have an example in which there is a product that is being produced in a, uh, or manufactured in a factory and there is waste generated uh, in the production and this waste is reused then again in the production line so the the the, uh, the waste was not generated after the use of of the product so it is called pre-consumer recycled contact and we have a valuation factor of 
have there. And if there is any US CBC approved program show, 25% uh, by cost should uh, uh, fulfill the criteria of the six that we have just discussed. And the valuation factor for uh, the location will apply here that if compli uh, compliant products are sourced, manufactured and purchased within 100 miles of the radius of the project, the valuation factor will be twice. Uh, so it will be multiplied by two. So this is the formula percentage of materials cost applicable product cost times criterion uh, based on some standard and, uh, and others that we have seen and the location plus the second product by uh, divided by the cost of all permanently installed products. The documentation of a uh, product that claims for the credit requirements like pre and post consumer recycling contract should be mentioned so that you can uh, apply the valuation factor suitable for the project. Exemplary performance can be earned one point uh, if you are going for 40 par uh, products in option one it was 20 before and if you can uh, show that at least 50 percent by cost in uh, the option number two which is regularly 25 percent so you can earn one point of exemplary performance in case you go in, in case you double the requirement uh, this is just to put again into uh, uh, perspective uh, the option number one and option number two uh, it's kind of gives you a, a, it's a flow chart so it gives you a comprehensive uh, image of uh, both the options so there were uh, three credits under building product and disclosure optimization this is credit number five we have discussed EPDs environmental product declarations then sourcing of raw materials and now this is the last one called material ingredients and it can also have one to two points in all adaptations the intent is to credit project teams for selecting products verify to minimize use and generation of harmful substances so all the products uh, we are using in our building or in our uh, project the le lead is trying to focus on multiple factors which uh, shows the sustainable angle or sustainable factor or uh, justifies the sustainability so now we are focusing on material ingredients the first option to fulfill the intent is material ingredient reporting just like we had EPD reporting so one point for all adaptations uh, the concept similar 20 products in this and in the other option it will be by cost so this one is by number of products 20 products by five different manufacturers uh, that use either uh, manufacturer inventory or uh, publicly disclosing all ingredients by the name and chemical abstract service registry number this uh, uh, CASRN is uh, in, in simplified words it shows that if there are any harmful substances they have to report it and uh, they gave it a number uh, the health product declaration just like we had environmental we have health product declaration uh, open standard for reporting product ingredients and associated health hazards if any uh, if the material uh, or if the product report that so uh, the third one is uh, c to c cradle to cradle we uh, discuss in detail what is cradle to cradle it requires ingredients to be disclosed to third party so we have a cradle to cradle version 2 basic or v3 bronze level and uh, based on these levels we will have number of point and if there is any uscbc approved program so results from bbdo calculator or equivalent to verification of products certifications based on their declarations should be submitted uh, for assessments now the second option uh, again there is an uh, a relationship of or and, and you can either go for one or you can go for both so the second option uh, going on the same pattern you have now products that are by cost at least 25 percent the documenting their material ingredient optimization using below uh, these are the standards green screen 1.2 benchmark uh, if it is green screen list translator valuation factor will be one if it is full green screen assessment the valuation factor will be 1.5 as I said gets a little boring when you are uh, only discussing the the standards because we are not going into the details of the standard and you will feel it more when we go to the environmental quality because there are so many standards that we are following and unfortunately will not be covering them but we'll only be discussing them i'll try my best that i give you a basic idea of what these standards are uh, about but we cannot discuss in detail there are uh, uh, big standards and and having big clauses uh, that fulfill the requirements 
So here we have green screen 1.2 benchmarks. We have C2C, Cradle to Cradle certifications. Uh, uh, we have stages C2C V3, Gold Platinum, that's going to give you 1.5. Silver is going to give you one, uh, one point. Just like the rating system, the more you comply with the, uh, with the requirements, the more points you get. Similarly, we have here with the valuation factor for the Platinum, uh, for C2C V uh, version 2, uh, the Platinum will have 1.5 valuation factor. And if compliant products are sourced, the same uh, idea which, uh, for the location. But there is one point here. If your product is C2C certified platinum, that is valuation factor of 1.5. And it's also sourced and harvested from uh, within 100 miles of the project with the valuation factor of 2. It becomes 1.5 times 2, 3, but it's not acceptable. The maximum you can achieve is valuation factor of 2. You can only uh, uh, gain twice the uh, cost of the of the product but not more than that even if you fulfill the criteria of c2c certification as well as the uh, harvesting location so the documentation ppd calculator tracking tool or equivalent and verification of the products having these certificates so option number two and option number three has a relationship of or we'll see either we go for option two or we go for option number three Option number three, supply chain optimization for one point. Uh, you could go for option number one, one point, and in between option two and three, you can gain one point to have total of two points. So here, this is also uh, by cost, at least 25% by cost uh, for the materials that document 99% by weight of the ingredient used. Usually, the, the products you purchase, uh, uh, the, the material they use, they do not mention all of the materials. They just mention the main materials or the, the primary uh, materials they are or ingredient they are using in this case if 99 percent by weight uh, is declared and it, it is mentioned as an ingredient the valuation factor applied will be one and you can use all of the cost of that uh, product in uh, supply chain optimization credit the second is that it is sourced by manufacturer who are verified by third party for supply chain so it will also have a valuation factor of one and uh, the location valuation factor applies wherever we have uh, cost-based products that if it is source manufacture and purchase within 100 miles will have a valuation factor of two uh, there is one uh, additional thing here that if in option two there are complying products and if they're in option three complying products you can combine both of them to have a certain percentage you can com uh, take compl uh, complied prog uh, products from option number three and compliant products from option number two and if they are combined to form 25 percent you can either uh, add it in uh, one of the credits so uh, this is the formula the percentage of um, materials cost product cost time criteria factor time location factor plus the other uh, uh, products by cost of all permanently sold products documentation is uh, results from the calculator or equivalent tool and the documentation of supply chain optimization in case we have third parties verification we have to submit that exemplary performance uh, keeping the same idea doubling the uh, number of products from 20 to 40 will gain you one point or from 25 to 50 percent by cost in option number two just like what we did before to put things into perspective this is for material ingredients a flow chart showing the options and uh, uh, the valuation factors and and or, or relationship that you can choose from uh, this sums up the materials and resources uh, chapter but there are some uh, credits and there is one prerequisite uh, related to healthcare only so i'll make a second part of the video in which i will discuss uh, those uh, credits and that prerequisite thank you